Hello, um, welcome to the part of the tutorial where we're going to teach you how to clean out the Super Nintendo's controllers. Um, this guy will show you how to clean out the surfaces so they look uh, squeaky clean and uh, make the buttons less sticky. And uh, if there's like any, um, you know, just controller doesn't work problems, this tutorial will most likely fix it. Okay, uh, the materials we'll need for this tutorial are a glass cleaner or Windex. Um, be careful with this around the circuit boards as there's ammonia in this and ammonia is a circuit board's least best friend and yeah if you get uh, any ammonia on the circuit board it can be kind of a big problem uh, the next thing you'll need for majorly big kind of things is the um, a spray electronics cleaner I really use the spray electronics cleaners a lot because you know they get out air dust from from the spraying and uh, they can just um, make your electronics work a lot better. In general, that thing's pretty good to clean almost any electronic with. Just a future reference. Okay, next thing you'll need is paper towels or a cleaning cloth. Um, either one will do, just one you don't mind getting dirty if it's a cleaning cloth. And the uh, last thing you'll need is the um, a jeweler's uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, these ones are practically really, really tiny, just you know, jewelers, small small stuff, rings, jewelry, you know. This is just tiny to get into the, you know, little um, screws of the Super Nintendo controller. And uh, with that, um, all the things are listed that you need. Um, we'll begin the tutorial. Oh, and lastly, um, you may need a Q-tip if your controller has, like, I don't know, I just love Q-tips. Uh, you put a little uh, glass cleaner on the end, and if, like, let's say, uh, inside your controller you got some, I don't know, uh, sticky thing from five years ago, uh, just scrub it down with that, and it'll be all good. All right, uh, without further ado, let's begin. All right, to start out, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, take the f uh, five little uh, screws out of the back of the controller with the Jewelers Phillips head screwdriver. Now that we got uh, the one, two, three, four, five screws, oops, uh, the five screws right out of the, uh, oops, I'll let you see, I'll show you. Five screws uh, out of the back of the Super Nintendo. What we're gonna do now is open, open it carefully. Uh, some buttons uh, may fall out, but just be wary. Okay. Set the uh, mainly plastic part um, down, and the uh, mainly uh, the button side part with the circuit board down. Um, you may find on the mainly plastic part, um, you'll find these two little plastic things. Keep track of these as well as your screws that you took out earlier. Just set them aside. And uh, what we're going to do now is on the circuit board um, half, uh, unsnake the cable. and you'll find that the circuit board just pops right out. Under it is the rubber um, receivers for the buttons. But yes, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean out the circuit board. Take your spray electronics cleaner and spray on there. If you get any on yourself, just wipe it off. Probably shouldn't kill you if it's not too much. Who knows what a gallon would do to you? Not I. Okay, um, the reason why I just uh, spray this off is because, um, see you right here where it says like left, up, down? That's where the D pad, uh, the directional buttons, let me see if I can get them for you. The directional buttons right here, that's where they correspond to. It completes a circuit when you press down one of the buttons. Right there. Oh, when you spray it off, you're getting rid of any grime that might interfere, that might interfere with um, you completing the circuit with any of those buttons. All right, you need to let this dry for a sec. Uh, just set it upside, you know, somewhere where it won't break. <laughs> Put it on top of my cloth. And uh, right now, if you want to, you don't have to. Uh, just, just if you want to, you while you have your spray electronics cleaner out. Uh, take the con end of the controller port, um, the in controller insert, 
and just spray that out. I got some on my face. All right. All right. With the circuit board done and um, all of the uh, you know delicate parts of the uh, controller cleaned, uh, we're going to move on to the um, to the buttons and the plastics. Oh, and lastly, I'm not going to do this right now, but um, the L and R buttons in the back, they also have little receivers. You, f you can feel free to spray those out, too. Right, um, now, that, now that we have the mainly uh, delicate stuff done, done cleaning, and the circuit board is all squared away for now, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the mainly plastic part of the, um, of the controller, which is the half that we uh, didn't attend to earlier, and you're going to take the two buttons out, the L and R buttons, and each you should get a little rod. I dropped mine. I try to keep track of these as they're very, very easy to lose. They keep on slipping out and going all over the place and are even more annoying when you have to uh, put them back away. Alright. Okay. To clean uh, the uh, plastics out on the inside of the Super Nintendo, you're going to take your cleaning cloth and or, or paper towel. And you're gonna take your Windex or glass cleaner. Spray it on the offending area or the uh, the towel. If you got a real nasty spot, you can spray it on the nasty spot, wait for a while and come back. But uh, this buffing method should just do uh, the same thing. All right. If you want to get into smaller areas, like, um, I don't know, maybe inside of this little round thing, if you're just a neat freak like that, um, not too much of me like that, only sometimes, uh, you can get the Q-tip, uh, put Windex on it, and then just scrub it out. Alright, uh, looks like I'll be done with that. And, um, yes, uh, that's how you clean the plastics out. Uh, you can do that to the buttons, too. Okay, uh, now that your plastic side is clean right here, um, you may um, want to start uh, thinking about cleaning all the buttons. See, these are kind of annoying. You know what, I'm just going to put little rods in the screw pile. Uh, hopefully they'll stay still there. Okay, the buttons um, you may realize are a little bit loose. Uh, yeah, you want to hold the uh, button panel, which holds all the buttons, downward, or if you hold it upside well, if you hold it on the upside, it's going to drop all the buttons out. Uh, what I suggest starting with are the L and R buttons. Uh, like I said earlier, just take your Windex and, um, you know, wipe out any imperfections or sticky parts that may be causing the button to stick in. Alright, buttons are cleaned off, uh, back buttons. Now to uh, clean out the buttons that are like, you know, on the front side, you're going to peel off the, uh, the electrical layer. Don't try to mess with any of these black parts, as these are the parts of the button that complete the circuit when you press them down. We're going to start with the uh, A, B, and, uh, you know, the A, B, and the uh, X, Y buttons. Uh, to do this, well, what I just did for this is my buttons usually don't stick, and I just wanted to make sure. I just uh, doused my um, cleaning cloth and Windex like that, uh, gave it a quick bath, next one, gave it a quick bath, next one, gave it a quick bath, and so on and so on. But, you know, if you find any, like, big uh, spots, then, you know, you can fix them. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And uh, I don't have this right now. It's actually kind of advanced. Uh, if you have any uh, electrical uh, contact paint, and uh, some of the uh, the reason why uh, you're not like your buttons aren't working is because the electrical contact paint has rubbed off on one of your controllers. What you may try is just painting it back on right there. I'm not going to do that though since, well, I don't have the paint to be first on that, but I'm just saying if you're having that specific issue solved right there. Uh, I think you can get the paint on like um, repair websites and stuff like that. Don't know one to be specific, but uh, you could try Home Depot. Or Radio Shack, some other store. Okay, uh, with all of the uh, A, B, X, Y buttons cleaned out, we're going to move to the uh, select and start buttons. Uh, use the Windex, clean the tops of the buttons out, any sticky parts. Uh, lastly, the D pad. Move the D pad and its little um, contact. Uh, piece right here, and uh, the D-pad will likely have a lot of dust in the corners and such, and this is where you may want to use a Q-tip. But I won't. I just uh, want to get my stuff cleaned out generally, so it works. Alright, now that our button's completely washed off, um, uh, you can get in here to the uh, controller, uh, well, you know, the button side of it. It looks really more complex uh, with the plastic parts on the inside than I think it would. Uh, it also has, like, colors on there or whatever. I don't know what it means. Probably some recycled stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you can just polish this off with Windex, too. Okay, with all of our buttons clean and uh, your controller's most likely not sticky anymore, and, um... You're all in ship shape. Uh, what we're going to start doing is we're going to put our controller back together. Putting the controller back together is quite easy. All you got to do is um, your um, uh, circuit board right now is most likely dry. And now what you are going to do is um, uh, prep the circuit board just like have it at hand. I'm going to put it um, right by the camera. And uh, we're going to put all the buttons back in now. Ooh, rods are trying to leave me again. The metal rods and the L and R buttons. Um, place the start and select buttons back in their slots and just press them in. Make sure that little peg is lined up in the middle. Now what you're going to want to do is uh, take your... Um, sorry, excuse me. take your uh, buttons and put them uh, back in. Hold them upside down. Oops. Select button fell out. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. Uh, hold it upside down as, well, yeah, the buttons will fall out. And on the X and Y button ports, uh, put the, uh, uh, like, the lavender colored buttons. Make sure to line them up. The last button's not agreeing with me. <laughs> Oop. I mismatched the buttons. Some buttons have an exact hole they go in. Guess I just learned that. Alright. So the lavender buttons go in the top and the purple ones go in the bottom. And to avoid your uh, buttons falling out, what you're going to do is you're going to take the green little plastic piece and you're going to place it uh, with the black thing showing up and line it up with the two small tiny little pegs and press it over it. 
Now uh, that's how the buttons work. Uh, place your D-pad any direction. It all looks the same on each side. Back into its little spot. And uh, line up the tiny little peg right there with the D-pad. And uh, you should all be set. Now the buttons are back in. Most of them are at least. What you're going to do is you're going to take the metal rods. You're going to go to your plastic side. We're going to do all the buttons now. You're going to go to the plastic side and take the buttons. Uh, t go to the plastic side right here and take the uh, back buttons, the L and R buttons, and place the metal rods in on the on these pegs back here first. Now facing towards you, uh, find your left and your right and put the L button on the left side, making sure it's locked in right there and everything. Put the R button on your right side, making sure it's locked in and everything. Alright. And now begin the, um, the circuit board's grand pudding back away. Now, uh, you need to totally make sure everything is dry that you've, um, wiped down with Windex. If you don't, then your controller's gonna get messed up pretty badly. Controller goes in just like that. Resnake the cable. It should be bent in in place because it's been that way since so long. There we go. Cable's all back in place. Place the two little uh, things that look remotely like earbuds back into their proper positions, uh, like this, on each a little back side button. Oops. Now the tricky part is getting the whole thing sandwiched back together. Since I'll have difficulty doing that, I'll be right back with it sandwiched back together. But um, I'm going to show you the technique first. What you must do is there's two little pegs right here that line up with the two little rods that were annoying me earlier. Um, place the circuit board side down, as so. And um, hold the buttons in place, making sure they're like supposed to look like how they're look supposed to look like how they're supposed to look and hold the rods down and when uh, you get right over the point where the rod should fall down uh, make the rods um, interlock the rods with the bottom pegs uh, some people like to put the rods on here first and then um, just have the can uh, have the L and the R buttons hanging loose and slide the little um, pegs in on the L and the R buttons but um, that that's the way you can do it. Uh, it takes a while, but eventually you'll be able to fit it back in. I'll be right back with it fit in. Okay, um, I was able to uh, put the pegs in the uh, in on the bottom that method, and uh, it actually just easily slides in once you get it in place. See, all back to normal. Uh, your button should be moving a little bit more fluidly. That's always good. And uh, you're going to want to put all the tiny Phillips head screwdriver uh, screws back into their original positions, one, two, three, four, five, and you just cleaned out your Super Nintendo controller. Uh, this tutorial does not work for you. It probably should because it mainly covers a lot of things. If it doesn't, check out uh, my sources um, and suggestions, uh, the website I have below if you're not watching this on my website. If you are, they're right below. And, um, yes, um, that's how you do it. Uh, you know, any problems, just send them to me, and I'll fix them right away. Thanks for watching my big Super Nintendo uh, tutorial, guys. Um, yeah. Thanks. Bye.